So a little while back I went to Chandler's school uh, to uh, show Chandler's first grade friends um, about the Rubik's Cube, about the history of the cube, the structure of the cube, and uh, show uh, how Chandler can solve it so quickly, and those kinds of things. Uh, uh, and we shot it on video. So here it is. Enjoy. Our story begins with an architect. Do you, do you know what an architect is? An architect designs... Pictures. Houses. Buildings. Houses. Okay. Builders. An architect also designs... Tree. A tree? Trees. Trees. Oh, wow. Spirit. I built tower. I built tower. Buildings. <laughs> An architect also designs... Cars? Bridges. Bridges. Wow. And That's sometimes an architect designs some things, just structures, something that can stand on its own. Something that can stand on its own. There was once an architect named Eero Rubik. And he was not only an architect who designed buildings and things, but he was also, like Mrs. Graham, he was a teacher. Actually, he was a professor at a college, so he taught college students. And he had an idea one day that he wanted to build a structure, he wanted to build something which would be kind of made of blocks. Something which would be made out of blocks, like this. But he had this idea that he wanted this structure to turn this way, or turn this way, but not fall apart. He wanted to build something which was like a cube, but which would stay stuck together even if you turn stuff around. And he wondered if he could do this. That's so smart. So what he did was he went home and he got some blocks like this and he tried to build this thing. And first of all, he used rubber bands to tie the thing together, but that fell apart. And then he used nails and screws and nuts and bolts to kind of tie these together, but they didn't really turn properly. So he kept on buying more and more wood, and he kept on um, doing woodworking, basically. Just basically, uh, what do you call it when you carve wood? Basically, yeah. he was a wood carver. Mm -hmm. And finally, he found a way to make all these blocks stick together and turn, but not fall apart. It was amazing. And he looked kind of like this. No, I bought it like this, actually. It started like this. Oh. And Mr. Rubik <laughs> built something which looked like this, and he thought, I did so well. I can turn it, and it doesn't fall apart. I can turn another side, and it doesn't fall You're apart. It up. I can turn it, and he kept on turning it. He said, this is great. This is so fun. Now, let me put it back to the way it was. Uh -oh. And he couldn't. He tried and he tried, and he just couldn't put it back the way it was. Oh no. Uh -oh. What he didn't realize actually at the time was that he had made kind of a puzzle. He had made this thing which is actually almost impossible to solve. The reason why it's almost impossible to solve is, do you know how many different ways, do you know how many different uh, combinations it has? It's more than one million. What? In fact, it's more than one trillion. Oh my goodness. It's more than one quadrillion. And in fact, it's more than one quintillion. Oh my gosh. The Rubik's Cube can be messed up in more than 43 quintillion ways. That makes me feel better. <laughs> and there's only one solution, oh, which is to put it back the way it was. Now, here's a fun thing about the Rubik's Cube. If some of you played with the Rubik's Cube for a while, and I'm sure some of you have tried, most of you would be able to solve one side. One side. I'll try to solve one side right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solve the white side. So what I'm doing is I'm going to... Can you see I have like four whites there? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, now I have five. Can you see I have five now? Uh, if I do this, I think I can have... Oh, I've got six now. 
Six is good, right? And I think if I do that, I can have seven. That's seven whites. Seven whites is pretty good. Getting close, getting close. Now it gets a little bit harder because there are some pieces here which are stuck in the bottom and they're really hard to... T here we go. I have eight now. Oh, no. <laughs> and just one more. That's really annoying. It's stuck kind of there, but it's okay. I'll just uh, turn it like this. And here we go. I've made one side. Right? And everyone says, wow, look at me, mommy. I made one side all white. But actually, that's not how you should solve Ruby's Cube because it's not about sides. It's actually about blocks. These are blocks. What I mean is that this side is all wrong. This white may look like it's correct, but if you look on the side, these are the wrong blocks. These need to be all matched up too. In fact, this is really fun. The way to solve a Rubik's Cube because Ono Rubik was an architect, it's, this is kind of like building a house. What you should try to do is to build one side, we call it the bottom layer, the foundation, perfectly first. Not this kind of messed up colors here with greens and orange, oranges together, or blues and greens like this. What Chandler is doing right now is he's trying to move the blocks around so that all the right blocks are in the right place. Now this is not easy to do. But what he's doing is, he is building the bottom layer of, if you imagine this to be some kind of building or house, he's building this bottom layer so that, so that it is all perfectly together. We have all the greens together, all the oranges together, all the blues together, and all the reds together. So, that's what Chandler did, he built a foundation. Now the next thing to do is to build the middle layer, which is like Wait, the main part of the house. What Tan is going to do now is to try to match up all the colors which are in the middle layer, but this is the hard part. He's going to build the middle layer without messing up what he already did, which is the bottom layer. <laughs> and what Mr. Rubik found, which is so hard to do, is that on a Rubik's cube, oh, wow, it's half on a Rubik's cube, it's half a Rubik's. when you move one piece, <laughs> eight other pieces move at the same time. And it gets so hard, because it keeps messing up other things when you try to fix something. Haven't you found that that's what happens sometimes? Mm -hmm, yeah. But what Chandler did was to be able to make the middle layer what? without messing up what he already did. Now this is the hard part, because the top layer is left, the roof of the house. Mm -hmm. And how do you even make all of that perfect without messing up all of this stuff? Mm -hmm. That's very hard. We do it in two stages. The first thing we're going to do is to make sure that all the yellow colors are facing the same direction, facing upwards, okay? So China's going to move the cube so that all the yellow colors are facing up. Chandler, that is impressive, buddy. Look how fast his fingers go. So now we're almost done. He did the bottom, he did the middle layer, and he's going to work on the top layer. He did everything to make it all yellow, but actually it's not quite right. One more thing left to do. Some of these blocks have to switch places with each other because they're not in the right place. So to finish the roof of this building, Chandler is going to move the yellow bits around so that each block is in the right place. Are you guys saying no. that I was so impressed? How did he do that? <laughs> How did he do that? Let me explain what Chandler is doing. And this is a difficult word I'm going to teach you, but mm -hmm. you're in the first grade, so I think I can teach you this we word. Like it's called an algorithm. Ooh. It's a hard word. Can you guys say that word? Algorithm. An algorithm. algorithm. An algorithm is a series of instructions that tells you what to do in a certain situation. An algorithm for the Rubik's Cube kind of looks like this. It looks like this. What this means is to move the front side, to move the right side, to move the up side, to move the right side, to move the up side, to move the left side, to move the up side, to move the left side, to move the down side. <laughs> this is an algorithm which is an instruction of what to turn where. Mm -hmm. If you learn about seven or eight algorithms, and if you know when to use them, you will also be able to solve the Rubik's Cube. You have to memorize these things. And when Chandler did this for the first time about four or five months ago, it took him 18 minutes. 18 minutes. 
In 18 minutes, he was able to solve the Rubik's Cube because he had memorized about seven or eight algorithms. But then Chandler wanted to become faster. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about the Rubik's Cube, which is there's lots more algorithms you can memorize. In fact, it's pretty scary if you think about the fact that there are hundreds oh of different algorithms. These are the instructions of what to do when the cube is in a certain situation. Wow. And Chandler knows over a hundred of these. Oh, Chandler has memorized <laughs> over a hundred of these instructions. So Chandler knows what to use when. In fact, he's memorized his algorithm so well that if I scramble the cube in a certain way to mix up the corners like that, then Chandler, because he's memorized algorithms, in fact, he can not even look at the cube, right? And he knows the sequence of movements to bring it back to the way it works. He doesn't even need to look at the cube. Wow. Because he knows it is, so cool. it is kind of cool. Here's a different one where I moved different corners to the different places. I just scrambled it up. If Chandler looks at this cube, he can close his eyes <laughs> and he'll move the cube around in a way to make sure Please. it goes back. <laughs> Because he's memorized so many different ways the cube can be, and all the ways to move the cube to do it, Chandler got faster and faster and faster, and actually, a few days ago, on Saturday, he went to a competition. Where? Mm -hmm. At a place called Caltech, Why California Institute of Technology. Oh, I just, I like shooting myself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he went there, and he solved the cube in under one minute. Whoa! So, anyway, just to end, I'll show you, maybe you want to do a speed solve. The speed solving is when you try to solve it as quick as you can. The first time was 18 minutes, but nowadays Chandler does it in mostly under a minute, sometimes even around 40, 48 seconds. That's yeah, about so 48 time seconds. So right now, what he's doing is. He's finding different pieces which are far away mm -hmm. and then putting them together so they become a little block and they're moving blocks around. One side. Yeah, he's done with the bottom two sides already. <laughs> he's done with the top side now. And all he has to do is to shuffle a couple of things around. And you're done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love that. My friends, can we say thank you so much, Mr. Kim? Thank you so much, Mr. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, actually, after that uh, little presentation, uh, we talked to Chandler's friends and they said they wanted to learn how to do the Rubik's Cube too. And we had this kind of idea that we would share our method, how we learned how to uh, solve the Rubik's Cube, because actually together we came up with a method to use Lego and to use music to uh, help to memorize some of the really difficult uh, algorithms uh, in solving the cube. And so we did it. We actually started making these videos and we've been posting them online on YouTube. So uh, if you want to check them out, uh, have a search around YouTube uh, or subscribe to our channel so you can find out whenever we post new videos and uh, we'll see you around. Thank you.